It's the goalkeeper, is Babak Safari Kurabaslu again. He's back in. And uh, Lotfola Jangju and Moslem Makbari are both rested. Also, Jangju's picked up a yellow card. So Hassan Safari, the number four, is going to get his first minutes in the tournament. All look fairly relaxed. They know they're going to have a semi-final. They don't quite know who the opponents are going to be yet. Netherlands, a couple of changes. Ilyas Visca, who came on and scored right at the end of their last match against Argentina, starts for the first time with Klein Lutebelt on the bench. They're both Class 8 players, so only one of them can play at any one time. Jeroen Set there is on the bench. There's Klein Lutebelt with the arms folded. The man who's had more shots than anybody on goal in this entire tournament. But he picked up a yellow card and sensible to rest him today. If he picks up another one, he'll miss a semi-final and they can't afford to be without him, the Dutch. Marcel Geestman, who said his side's ambition was to reach the semi-finals before the tournament began. And a draw will take them there today. Jeroen Skytet is back into the Dutch side as well today in place of Jeroen Set. So the pressure's off the Iranians, really. The Dutch need to get something. Both have played expansively, entertainingly so far. This should be a really good game. So who's going to win Pool B in the Football 7 aside? We are about to find out. It will be one of these two teams, Iran in the white and the Netherlands in the familiar orange. The Dutch have to win it to win the group. A point will do for Iran. Dutch must make sure they don't lose this game. If they were to be beaten, then the USA would still have a chance of reaching the semi-finals. For Iran, they know they'll be in the last four, whatever happens. Football seven aside for athletes with cerebral palsy or those who've had a stroke or a brain injury. And all the athletes have coordination impairments of, of some degree, varying from class five, the most impaired, to class, class eight, the least impaired. Most of the players you'll see here are in class seven. That's because teams have to have somebody from class five or six on the field at all times, but can only have one class eight. Here's Sadeh Hassani Bagi for Iran. That man, Yasem Bakshi, has scored in both of Iran's games to this point. Don't see either of these sides sitting back and uh, playing a defensive strategy. I'm not sure the Dutch will try and sit out for a point here. Should be open and an attractive game. And of course, with no offside rule in football seven aside, the conditions are set up for that anyway. Good chance for Iran to counter here. Bakshi is making a run down the centre. 
This is Farzat Mehri. Well, Mohamed Karat was just looking for the deflection there. Very nearly came off. And you'll see that tactic quite regularly. The shot from distance with players trying to get in between the shot taker and the goalkeeper, looking to just deflect the ball past the keeper into the goal. And because there's no offside rule, again, they can get quite close to the goalkeeper to do that. So sometimes it does pay to shoot from long distance. Even with the goals relatively small. In towards Visca. It's not much shade to be had at the Diodoro Stadium. Lars Konheim for the Dutch. Here's Mina De Vos. Now Visca. Visca came on for one minute against the uh, Argentinians in the previous game. Had one shot and scored with it. The thumping goal. Here's Sade Hassani Bagi for Iran. And some lovely skill. And he was very unlucky. Tried to pick out the top corner. And very nearly did so. Super run, the crowd love to see the individual skill. He picked out the cameraman instead, I think. More chances for Iran. Karat on the run. But Van Altena has had a solid tournament to this point. Visca penalised for an arm in the back of Hassan Safari. There's Ilyas Visca. Hassan Safari on the field for the first time in this tournament. With uh, Jiangju rested, Jiangju on a yellow card. Regular in the Iranian defence. Here is Bakshi. Back out it goes to Mehri. <laughs> he used the referee very cleverly there. And it might pay off for him here. Oh, what a super pass! And Van Altena saves really well from Bakshi. It was really clever play from Farzad Mehri. Used the referee as a shield initially, but what a clever ball that was. It's the first time Mehri, the Iranian number six, has started in this tournament. But both times he's come on, He's really impressed, looks very cool on the ball, an excellent passer as we saw there. Here he is now, just dallied slightly too long. The commentator's curse can affect you wherever you are in the world. Here's Mehri again. Waiting for the run of Karat. And again, it was an accurate ball in. You could see Karat was just looking for the run across the defender. It's a good ball, it really is. It's 
suppose from a neutral point of view, if Iran get the first goal, it really will open things up. Because the Netherlands know a defeat will leave them in a relatively precarious position. Up towards Visca. Oh, it's neatly turned. Oh, Visca went flying in a little recklessly there. Just as well that he didn't make contact with uh, the Iran defender. They want to get Mehri on the ball all the time. He is a playmaker. Hassan Safari. Mehri. It's another thoughtful ball in. It was part shot, part pass. I mean, a strike on that ball. I think he's a terrific player. Rastagari, the captain. No chances from Van Altena. It's very much Iran dominating at the moment. Akshi with the ball in, out by Skytet. Here is Mehri. Away from one. Oh, looking for Hassani Bagi. This is beautifully played by Iran. <laughs> Splendid goal. Rastagari with the finish. That was the easy part. The Netherlands defence torn apart by some wonderful Iranian passing. They are getting better and better, Iran. Lovely play from Hassani Bagi. And Rastagari just applied the final touch. Now, the Dutch must respond. But how? How to get the ball from Iran, first of all, when they're playing with such confidence. They're relaxed now, Iran. They know they're in the semi-finals. And rather than taking their foot off the gas, seems to be getting them in a, a really good state of mind to express themselves. Here is Mehri again. They just can't get the ball from him. Again, it looks like an ambitious shot, but he's putting the ball into a dangerous area towards Karat and Bakshi, who are up there. He's thinking about the positions of his teammates when he's hitting the ball. Iran have got everybody well marked. Struck the corner flag and stayed in. Yasem Bakshi getting away from DeVos. Iran bronze medalists in London, bronze medalists in Beijing before that. But only got into this championship at the last minute when Russia were excluded. 
have heard stories once or twice in the past of teams getting in at the last minute and going on to, to do very well. Mechley didn't play that pass to Bakshi particularly well. by Conine up towards Visca. He's being tightly marshaled so far, Vi uh, Visca. Dangerous player with plenty of Paralympic experience and plenty of goals. Mechli, or super pass into Karat, and he rolled his man well. Van Altena. Is really busy now. Visca, bit of space here, up against Hassani Bagi, the two Class Eight players, going head to head, and Iran got plenty of men back. Visca already looks a little frustrated to my eye. This wasn't the way the Dutch envisaged the game would go. Sani Bagi to Mechri. Now Bakshi. Might get a second chance, Bakshi. He will. Oh, I'm not sure he made the best of that. Thirty minutes each way in the football seven aside, so we're nearly at the midway point of the first half. And it's Iran who are dominating. Nine shots on goal, six of those on target. They're getting into really good positions. And of course the goal from Rastagari in the ninth minute. The Netherlands just one attempt wide. And the Dutch have only had 35% of the ball. In the grand Dutch tradition, they would be the ones dominating the passing. Lots to admire about the Iranian play. Mechri to Bakshi. Dan Dickin with the interception. And now here's Visca. Basically asking him to do it all on his own, Visca. And he might just do that. Well, that's the best moment so far for the Dutch. Visca hitting the target and at least testing Safari Kurabaslu. Very much a counter-attacking setup at the moment from the Dutch. They've dropped deeper and deeper as the game has worn on. Really are trying to keep a defensive shape now and restrict the space. Hassani Bagi felt he was caught after he played the shot there. The referee does not agree. Conine looking for Mina De Vos. You heard the call, and he's taken it well. And De Vos going on here. Wanted to use the left side, so... Wasn't an easy position to get the shot away. Nice turn by Dickin. Here's De Vos again. The 
Iranian goal. The finish was the easy bit. This was beautiful passing from Mehri and then Hassani Bagi just drawing the defender in. It's all about Mehri beating the first man though and delivering the weight of pass to Hassani Bagi which allowed him to just faint and wrong foot the defender. Mehri very seldom strays out of the middle of the field. He's looking to find the passes from this kind of position. Skytek got onto him, but now Mehri has got it back. And Mehri makes it too. It's another fabulous finish. Drilled into the bottom corner. And Iran look like winning Group B here at Akanta. Farzad Mehri is dominating the match. What a finish. Well, the Dutch could, could find themselves in a little bit of trouble here. If um, the scoreline gets much worse, Visca, Mechri, you just got at him at the key moment. That tells its own story. Around the dominant side here, two excellent goals. Mehri looking to try and find Karat. The Dutch are on four points. Iran with a victory here would move to nine. The USA who play Argentina later have the one point. So they could still get to four. Mehri nearly found Karat. Well defended by Lars Konine. Up it goes to Visca. Sharp turn and another. <laughs> Conine towards Dickin, but uh, Rastagari was there, and Iran look controlled. The thing about the Netherlands' previous two games was that Thomas Klein Lugtebelt was their dominant player. And he was involved defensively, he was involved going forward as well. He had a vast number of shots, 25 out of the team's 46 in their opening two games. And they've kept him on the bench today. I think primarily because he picked up a yellow card in the previous match and they didn't want to risk that he might pick up a second and get a suspension. But 2-0 down now, and the situation a, bi a bit precarious. At what point will Marcel Hestman turn to him? Iran looking for three, and Bakshi, and Karat is going to get the touch, the whistle went. It's not going to count. Well, the Dutch are living right on the edge here. Did he just handle the ball? That was pretty close. He didn't protest vociferously, Karat. He knows his team are lucky not to be 3 0 down there. It's such a good position. Stefan Boersma is the uh, reserve goalkeeper for the Dutch. He's just uh, warming up.
Bakshi with the effort there. Good save by Van Altena. Just there. Maybe it just came off the forearm. He's a, yeah, he's a little bit unlucky. Never felt the arms were too far from his body, but just helped him to bring the ball down before he put it in. Dutch got the benefit of the doubt with that call. The question is, at, at what point do they decide to turn to Klein Luke to belt, assuming that he is fit enough to, to play a part today? That's the second goal by Mechri. It's a wonderful finish. Yeah, Joey Mensah and co. No, they've got problems here. And this is Iran's best performance of the tournament to this point. They were pretty decent in beating Argentina 3-1. And then a 2-0 win over the USA with goals at either end of that match. But the quality of the passing today and the movement, the interplay, it's the best it's been from Iran so far. Mechri, they're just trying to draw the Dutch out a little bit here. Safari. Hassani Bagi. Just under six minutes to half time. Farzad Mechri, chief tormentor of the Dutch so far. Safari again. Karat. Safari. Well, the thing is, it's Iran who are going top of the group here with three wins out of three. It's all very well to think, well, that they're not getting anywhere with the passing here, but they don't have to. It's the Dutch who have to come out and change this scoreline. So the Iranians are well within their rights to say, come on, you, you better chase it, you better try and get it back. They can't just sit in their defensive shape for the rest of the game. Mechri. Dickon reacted well. And every time they play it forward, it looks dangerous. Big question for Iran here is, having won the bronze medal at the last two Paralympic Games, is this side capable of going one or even two better? They already knew before today they'd, they'd face a semi-final against Brazil or Ukraine. Could they trouble one of those two sides? Can't wait to find out, to be honest. It'll be a terrific match, whoever they play. Is Karat coming a little bit deeper to collect. Mechri. Oh, what a good pass again. Bakshi was looking to try and find Karat with the header back. There's Klein Luke to belt in the centre there.
It's an uncomfortable day all round for the Dutch and their supporters. Hot conditions and getting hotter, and the pressure is getting turned higher and higher. Karat. Nothing wrong with the challenge, it will be a goal kick. Two minutes to half time, what a good first half it's been for Iran. Strong challenge from behind on Karat. And he's in a bit of trouble. I was surprised the whistle didn't go there because defender comes in at the back of the defender more often than not. It is a free kick, but the referee's not stopping play with uh, Karat in some difficulty. And it was the Netherlands who played it out very sportingly. And that is a foul. That is a foul. Joey Mensah. Yeah, he's a key part of this Iranian team, Mohamed Karat. The man who spends most time, I think, in the opposition penalty area. In their first match, when they beat Argentina 3-1, he was involved in all the goals, scored one of them. So how much added on time will there be at the end of the first half? Maybe time for the Netherlands to try and create a chance. Comfortable for the Iranian goalkeeper. Well, as things stand, Iran nine points, three wins out of three will top the group. The Netherlands will be stuck on four points and we'll have to wait and see if that's enough to get them into the semi-finals. Some gymnastics in the penalty box from Yasin Bakshi. Up to Visca it goes. Away from Rastagari. Support from Conine in the box. Maybe he was just hoping that uh, Balak Safari might just spill it. What a good first half it's been from Iran. They've scored two splendid goals. Rastagari finishing off a fine move and then Mehri drilling a shot into the corner. They have just looked a class above. And that means as things stand, the Netherlands are waiting and hoping to see if their tally of four points will be good enough for a semi-final place. They need a couple of goals, but it's going to be difficult. Iran lead the Dutch at half-time by two goals to nil. Watching their previous matches in uh, Pool B, didn't necessarily expect the gap between these two teams to be as large as it has appeared. And the stats do reflect that. 69% ball possession for Iran. The Netherlands' only tactic on the attack seems to be counter and try and get it up to Ilyas Visca and hope that Visca can work some magic on his own. 
problems for Marcel Geestman. He's got his star player, Thomas Klein, Luke to belt on the bench. Does he want to risk putting him out there, assuming he's fit enough to play? I think they have to, sooner rather than later. They were a bit dependent on Klein Lutebelt in the previous two matches, and without him, they are struggling. But Iran look good, good enough that they are contenders to even pot potentially win this championship. Didn't play in the World Championship for last year, Iran, because of visa problems. So didn't qualify, dropped down the world rankings. Looked like they weren't going to be here at all. But now they are here. They're turning on the style. And Mehri creating chances, scoring goals. He's been terrific. And there he created the angle for the pass to Hassani Bagi. And he lifted it in for Rastagari to score the opening goal. It's just lovely football. No offside, remember. So nothing wrong with the finish at all. <laughs> Thrilling piece of football from Iran. The Dutch are a really decent side and they've been cut open at times. Again, Mehri good enough to just change the angle. Get the pass in or get the shot away as he did there. What a good finish. And it's been a headache for the Dutch. The chances have kept on coming. 2 0 up on 18 minutes. They could have had more goals after that. The Dutch really haven't troubled the Iranian goalkeeper. What response can they provide in the second half? It's Iran who lead by two goals to nil at the interval.
The players emerging for the start of the second half at the Diodoro Stadium. And a lot of hard thinking and maybe some hard talking will have been done by the Dutch coaching team. That said, how to solve a problem like this Iranian team for Marcel Geestman and co. One or two glum faces in orange. I did wonder, Klein Lutebelt, the main man for the Dutch, they just couldn't wait any longer. The situation is sufficiently critical. He'll come on for Visca. He's their main man, Klein Lutebelt. Can he turn the tide? So the second half starts with Iran in control of this game and leading by two goals to nil, set to win the group. But the Dutch sufficiently worried about their semi-final place to bring on their star man at half-time. Klein Lutebelt is on for Ilyas Visca. The Dutch number four has scored in both of their previous games. He's been their chief attacking threat. He picked up a yellow card in the previous match. So he's under threat of suspension for the semi-finals, should they get there. But I think uh, they had no choice really but to bring him on. Can Klein Lutebelt help the Dutch turn the tide in this game? On the evidence of the first half, that looks a very tall order. The Iranians played superbly. It's Hassan Safari for Iran. Farzad Mehri pulled the strings in the midfield. Rastagari with the uh, ambitious effort. They'll be very contented on the Iranian bench. As things stand in Pool B, Iran topping the group with nine points. Unless the Dutch score three goals in this second half, Iran will win the group. Then it'll be the Dutch on four points. At the moment, their goal difference is zero. USA have one point with a game to play, and their goal difference is minus two. So the USA will need to win by two goals at least. And then they will take the Dutch place in the semi-finals. There's still a chance the two teams could finish dead level, but we're a way away from that. Lars Conine left a boot in there on Hassani Bagi. A little bit surprised that the referee didn't blow for a foul there. The, Dun the Dutch aren't too surprised that Hassani Baki is uh, perfectly OK to continue. The Iranian team had nearly 70% possession in the first half. The Dutch were restricted to just playing on the counter-attack and not doing that all that effectively either. 
Here's Mehri. Back sheet, Karat in the centre. Mehri was in there too, but uh, no joy this time for Iran. No whistle from the referee. Oh, good save by Van Altena from Bakshi. Here's Klein Luke to belt for the first time. Couldn't find Dickon who joined him in the centre. But you see what Klein Luke to belt wants to do. Work it back onto that left side and find a pass or shoot for goal himself. And that's a super return ball. And Lars Conine for the Dutch here. Saved by Safari. But immediately, Klein Lutebelt is causing trouble. It's the best position they've had. Hassani Baghi. Here's Mehri. Karat pulling towards the back post. Hassani Baghi on the overlap. And Altena elected not to catch it. Skill by Mehri. In steps Safari. Sani Bagi, Karat to his right. Here he is now, Mohamed Karat for Iran. It's a glorious chance to make it 3 0. Well, it really is open in this second half now. Here's De Vos. Or oh, Klein Lutebelt was screaming for it, and he should have had it. The best player was streaming up on the left-hand side. He was in space. The Why didn't DeVos play the through ball? Really good save a short time before that, though, from Van Altena. It was about getting the angle right, wasn't it? And he did that perfectly to deny Mohamed Karat. Karat on the favoured right side would really have fancied his chances. Here's Mehri. Now Karat again. Mensa did really well to readjust. And now Klein Lutebelt stretching the game for the Netherlands. Good defending by Rastagari, really good. Got back, got his body in the way, and initially Safari had shown Klein Lutebelt onto his weaker right side. Here's the chance. What a good save it was at the other end. Conine. Good stretch by Babak Safari. Hesitate to say that George Van Altena is keeping the Netherlands in the game because it, it, it feels like they're still some distance away from Iran, but that could yet be a part of the picture with Klein Lutebelt now providing an extra menace for the Dutch. Essential that they don't concede a third goal. 
Mechri, Bakshi making the run. DeVos just had to be patient and stand his ground. Great skill by Mechri. In it goes to Bakshi. Karat, two with him. Can they find the finish? Oh, Hassani Bagi. Another chance goes begging. Ball's not in the goal area. They're going to have to readjust its position. Hot work for everybody. And you've got to be fit as a referee because this game moves quickly from one end of the field to the other. That was an awkward one. Heavy fall for Hassan Safari in particular. I think the Iranians would be well advised to stop the game here because their teammate is in trouble. But once they haven't stopped it, the Dutch shouldn't do either. That was an awkward fall. He's annoyed he didn't get the free kick because the challenge was a little bit dangerous, really, from Dan Dickon. Mehdi Jamali is going to get uh, his first run out in these Paralympic Games, the number nine. It's a Paralympic debut for him. Yasem Bakshi, who uh, scored in each of Iran's first two matches, hasn't managed to find the target today, but again, he's been such a key part of the Iran's attacking intentions. He's had another good game. Less than 20 minutes to play. Just one or two little signs of a potential Dutch comeback. But still Iran look like they've got more goals in them as well. De Vos in pursuit. Mechri coming back to help out for uh, Iran. Well, the job is essentially done for the Iranians. They only need a draw to seal top spot in Pool B. They're winning comfortably. The onus is on the Dutch to change the momentum of this game. Well, Van Altena's punch went straight to Hassani Bagi. Dickon reacted well to get in the way. Here's Jamali, just come on. Karat, oh, he went down a little theatrically there. And he's going to get a yellow card for simulation. It was a little bit of contact, but that... Wasn't especially sporting from uh, Mohamed Karat.
Joey Mensa did reach, and I think he made a little contact with the ball, but he was looking for the penalty. Shouldn't count against Iran too much because assuming he doesn't pick up a second yellow today, the card would be uh, removed from the records before the, the semi-final. Klein Lutebelt taking on Safari, beating Safari. Oh. Well, he'd just got goal side and he's saying that there was contact and that's what put him off. It's had to be a clear foul, really, for Sky Arthur Banning to give it today. He certainly had a couple of grabs at Klein Lutebelt, but the referee felt that the Dutchman had actually got the right side of the defender and then lost control himself. But to what extent was he destabilised by, um, by a foul? The Dutch at least have succeeded in getting Iran to play their football a bit further away from their goal in this second half. But Iran don't mind keeping it in these areas again because the onus has to be on the Dutch. Klein Lutebelt has decided that he has to go off in pursuit of it. They can't hang around forever. It's risky because Iran are waiting to suck them in waiting to exploit the space that will emerge in behind once the Dutch push out. So they're in a really difficult situation, the Netherlands. They can also just simply hope that the USA don't win against Argentina later, and then they would be in the semi-finals anyway. But it will be a nervous wait if they don't get anything from this game. And the more goals they concede, the easier it will for the US, the easier it will be for the USA to, to overtake them later. Hassani Bagi back to Mechri. It's glorious passing this. And Hassani Bagi. And another try from Karat. Well, it looked like they might pass the way all the way through. Klein Luchterbelt. And he feels like he has to do it himself. Conai had made up a lot of ground to get with him. It has felt a little bit like a one-man show, the Dutch team at times during this competition. Sani Bagi with Safari with him. In fact, it was Mehdi Jamali with a shot. Well, it's comfortable this for Iran, and it can be. They're winning their third game here. They're going to top the group. 
It's the Netherlands who'll be having to hold on and wait for the result of the other game to see if they'll qualify for the last four. Meantime, here comes Moslem Akbari. And Mohamed Karat, he picked up that yellow card. They're not going to risk any chance of him getting a second one. Here is Akbari, Hassani Bagi, Mehri, lovely return. Oh, they were one pass away there. Jamali had got into a good position. Now here's Klein Lugtebelt. One Dutch player, three defenders. He's going to have to beat them all. And the referee's given him a free kick for the lunging challenge. Perhaps a little on the generous side. Ten minutes to go. Guido Flores is the Dutch player. He's going to come on for his first uh, appearance at these Paralympics. Klein Lutebelt. Oh, he thumped that one. A minute of Voss turning onto his weaker right side. Still, they can't find a way through. Certainly looked a little more dangerous with Klein Lutebelt out there. These he knows he's basically got to do it himself, I think. Iran know he is almost the only danger. They're leaving him double or triple marked. Iran are being careful here not to commit too many men forward. Mehri in the centre. Mensa with a challenge. Akbari. Hard work for the Dutch. Rastagari. Here's Akbari. Here's the free kick. Real venom on it from Klein Lutebelt. With Dickon just loitering in front of the goalkeeper. They were hoping maybe if it didn't go in directly that Dickon might be able to flick it home. It's his last action really of the game. Guido Flores, 24-year-old player who made his international debut last year, so competing in his first Paralympic Games. They actually had one minute against the USA in their opening match. Akbari picks out Jamali. It's a more conservative Iran in this second half. Mehri playing in a more advanced role, one I think to which he's less suited, but... Klein Luchtebelt keeps it in for the Dutch, wants it on that left foot. Just one touch too many. He did have support that time, there might have been a pass on. It's really hot. 
fairly humid and getting hotter all the time. That's perhaps another reason why the tempo has slowed quite understandably in the second half. Although the first half was, was energetic and Iran played some lovely stuff. Moved the, moved the ball much more quickly than they need to do now. Might as well conserve some energy for the semi-finals because that's where they're going to be. The Dutch, we're not so sure. Unless Klein Luchtebelt can find a couple of goals in the last few minutes. He was looking there for his captain, Conine. Akbari's just come on. Good tracking back to make the clearance. Skytut and Flaws trying to make runs, but there's nothing either of them can do with that. Iran 23 shots on goal to the Dutch 7. Iran have had 84% of the ball in the second half. Admittedly, they, they haven't threatened as regularly as they did, they did in the first half, but they haven't needed to. Hassani Baghi. Second chance. Akbari waiting in the centre. Mehri. Mehri. Simple enough save. Even a goal back for the Netherlands would help their chances of reaching the semi-finals. Would force the USA to win by an extra goal later. Iran with the counter. Jamali showed a lot of that to Mensah, but what terrific skill by Jamali. Last ditch defending by the Dutch, who were fortunate not to give away a free kick on the edge of the penalty area, I thought. Now Klein Luchtebelt has committed the foul. The referee played an advantage with Jamali, who dribbled his way through the challenge. But I thought he was unfairly tripped before he got to that point. Masani Baghi, Skytet decided it was best to try and make the headed clearance. Last three minutes. Iran looks set for a medal at this football seven-a-side competition. But will they be able to challenge either Brazil or Ukraine in the semi-finals? The two teams from Pool A, who we know have qualified, and have both looked terrific in their matches so far but this has been Iran's best display of the tournament Jamali here Hassani Baghi have they got a goal to finish it off not this time that was the tackle by Guido Flores which looked to foul but uh, when Jamali went on he still got the shot away Bechnam Sorabi is going to get his first taste of Paralympic football. And that means all the Iranian squad have now had a, had a go in the group stage. Everybody part of uh, 
the Iranian medal challenge. Farzad Mehri, the player off, had such a good first half for Iran. He's going to be a key part of their challenge for a medal. It's hard to see them not winning at least the bronze here. Could they win a semi-final against Ukraine or Brazil? Here's Klein Luke to belt. Last few seconds. A goal for the Dutch could still be important in the great scheme of things, even if they still lose the game. Goal difference might end up being a factor. Into added time we go, and it looks like both sides have settled for the 2-0 scoreline. The Dutch aren't prepared to risk conceding a third goal. And for Iran, the job is done. They've got the third victory, they've got the nine points, they're winning the group. And they'll be really confident of winning a semi-final match. They've never been in a Paralympic seven-a-side final, Iran. Maybe this is the year. Hassani Baghi with an Akbari for company, but uh, they're not going to push it, I don't think. It's already been an energy-sapping hour of football in the heat at the Diodoro Stadium. No point expending too much more. Second half hasn't lived up to the first, it's fair to say, but Iran were scintillating in that first half. Played the best football we've seen from them at these games so far, the best football we've seen from any team in, in Pool B. It's certainly the best team to emerge from it. The question is, can they compete with the best from Pool A, Brazil and Ukraine, who will be in the semi-finals? In what order, we don't yet know. It's Iran who win Pool B. A terrific first half performance. Got them two goals against the Netherlands. And they look in super form and a really good bet for a medal. The Netherlands will have to wait and see if their total of four points is enough for a place in the semi finals. Iran, a late entry to this competition when Russia were excluded but they are determined to take their chance and they are through to the last four as winners of Pool B. Two terrific first half goals. Farzad Mehri there had a splendid game. He got one of them, Rastagari got the other. The Islamic Republic of Iran have beaten the Netherlands by two goals to nil. And what it means is uh, Iran have nine points out of nine. This is how they did it. 76% possession overall. They had 82% in the second half. Didn't do as much with the ball in the second period as they did in the first. And the Dutch, even though they brought on their star man, Klein Luterbelt, couldn't turn the tide.
goals from Rastagari, but that was the easy bit really. It was the pass from Mehri and then the, the cross from Hassani Bagia that set him up, that did the damage. Movement and the angles from Iran were, were great in that first half. It's a joy to watch. So here are the standings. And Iran have won the group. The Netherlands.